Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the famous Victor Herbert operetta, Mademoiselle Modiste, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you, transcribed by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In this delightful Victor Herbert operetta, I play the no-account nephew of a Count of France. Lovely Dorothy Kirsten is Fifi, who is so expert at selling women's hats that we call her Mademoiselle Modiste. <laughs> Open the door of your shop, Mademoiselle Modiste, and show us a few. Won't you all come in? What kind of hat would you care to see? We have them all. Large hats, small hats, flat and very tall hats. Play a part in history for good or ill. Closer hats may make the man but first the world began Hats that made a woman And they always will Large hats, small hats Flat and very tall hats Play a part in history For good or ill Clover hats may make the man But since first the world began Hats that made the woman Fifi, there is not a hat in the store that wouldn't be more beautiful with you peeking out from under it. Such compliments, Etienne. You must keep under your hat. (laughs) Why, Fifi? Because the owner of this shop has forbidden it. Madame Cecile, the hat should face with the hat business. She will hear you. And after all, dear Etienne, you are a captain of the French army. I am merely a girl who works in a shop. But it makes no difference, Fifi. Perhaps someday I shall be something more. <laughs> Ask me again on that someday, dear Etienne. Oh, but I am not the kind of a man who can wait for a someday, Fifi. When I want something, I want it. For I want what I want when I want to. That's all that makes life worthwhile. For the wine that tonight... Fills my soul with delight On the morrow may seem to me vile There's no worldly pleasure myself I deny There's no one to ask me the wherefore I eat when I'm hungry And I drink when I'm dry For I want what I want what I want I want what I want when I want it I eat when I'm hungry and I drink when I'm dry for I you more than anything in the world, Fifi. It is impossible. Go quickly, Etienne. Here comes Madame Cecile. Then au revoir. For the moment, Fifi. Fifi! Fifi, come quickly. We have an American businessman shopping for hats. And you know these Americans. They always buy things by the dozen. Madame Cecile, I am weary of working in a hat shop. I am stuck here like a hat pin. I have spent all my life in a hat shop. Someday you will be just like me. Oh, dear. What? (laughs) Go quickly. Yes, madame. At once, madame. Hmm. There must be something immediately. 
Or I shall lose the best saleswoman in all Paris. I know. A letter to his uncle, the Count. Here. My special messenger to His Excellency, the Comte de Samar. I wish to inform you that your nephew and heir is spending all of his time flirting with a silly little girl in a hat shop at 19... <laughs> This hat, Monsieur American. Oh, bring out any old stuff you got in the shop that you want to get rid of. Matter of fact, I'm only buying these hats because I wanted to meet the most beautiful girl in France, Mademoiselle Modiste. You are very kind, Monsieur. But it does no good, this beauty you say I have. Why are you unhappy, Mademoiselle? Oh, in America, you have no nobleman. And it does not matter if a world separates you from the man you love. But here... Well, if you could be anything you wished, what would you be? I would be on the stage, monsieur. A star of the opera becomes almost a noblewoman, and I would be part of his world. What kind of part would you like to play? Oh, all kinds. If I were asked to play the part of simple maiden light of heart, village laugh in country clothes as to and from her work she goes. I'd sing a merry little strain and gaily dance to the sweet Wonderful. I'll buy every hat you've shown me, all 13. You know, if I was you, I'd quit this hat business and take up singing. Oh, but it is not possible. I need money to train my voice and to live while I study. Mm. Well, maybe somebody will come along who will believe in you and help you. I do not believe in such miracles. The hats come to 520 francs, monsieur. Oh, yes, here you are. Now, go wrap the hats and I'll write out where they're to be delivered. Yes, monsieur. The pen is there on the table. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Quick note on this envelope. Dear Mademoiselle Modiste, the hats are to be delivered to you. And this money I enclose is merely a loan because I believe in you and I believe in miracles. With sincerest hopes for your great success, your American friend, Hiram Brent. P.S. Pay me back whenever you like. There. The hats 
Parcel being wrapped, monsieur. Uh, the address, please. Oh, yes. It's uh, inside this envelope. Good day, mademoiselle. Good day to you, sir. I have sold a dozen and one half. But what good is it? Fifi. Oh, Fifi. Etienne. Oh, Fifi. The streets of Paris were empty because you weren't walking beside me. And my arms were empty because you were not in there. Oh, please, Etienne. Go away. Are there tears in those lovely eyes, my sweet? Has anybody hurt you? No. No. Oh, come here. Come here, my sweet. Safe in my arms, far from alarms. Love songs I sing, but in vain. Informant was correct. What you think, nephew? I find you an officer of France idling away your time in a bonnet shop. Uncle. Ah. And who is this designing woman who is trying to trap you? Uncle, all this woman designs are hats. Do you wish to be disinherited? Perhaps someday, dear Etienne, I shall be a great lady and your uncle will ask for my forgiveness. Until then, we had better say goodbye. No, Fifi. I am quitting the shop. I shall deliver these hats the American has bought. And then I shall never see you again. You are making a wise decision, mademoiselle. Tell me where you're going, Fifi. Perhaps to a faraway land. When I have seen only when I close my eyes and dream. Alas, to part how great the sorrow. To leave the friends grown fond with you. No perchance that on a morrow For love and smiles come doubts and tears Now I shall deliver these hats. The address is in the envelope. The address? Oh, it is addressed to me. Oh, but indeed Visions beyond the compare Out of this world of care Mademoiselle Modiste in just a moment. At a southern port recently, the long boom of a ship's crane reached toward a dock. Tackle was lowered. 
and a 90-millimeter gun was lifted from a flat car and swung into the ship's hold. This gun was the two millionth ton of military equipment sent overseas to 19 nations under the Mutual Defense Assistance Program, a program that is strengthening free nations to withstand worldwide aggression. In this program, and in the much larger one of building up and maintaining our own armed forces, both at home and abroad, the railroads are playing a vital role. For not only the delivery, but also the making of millions of tons of arms requires railroad transportation, the only transportation big enough and flexible enough to move the raw materials, the fuel, the parts in process of manufacture, as well as the finished goods. The rail movement today of military equipment and military personnel emphasizes how much we depend on railroads during times of national emergency. It's a matter of record that during World War II, railroads moved more than 90% of all military freight and handled 97% of all organized troop movements. In normal times, too, the railroads carry the very lifeblood of commerce, handling more freight traffic between our cities than all other forms of transportation combined. It's no wonder, then, that strong railroads are so necessary to the rebuilding of the forces of freedom. Such strength can best be achieved by allowing these essential railroads to earn revenues sufficient to attain financial health and to continue their extensive program of improvement, all of which means better railroad service for the nation and for you. And now here is act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Victor Herbert's Mademoiselle Modiste, starring Gordon McRae as Etienne and Dorothy Kirsten as Fifi. Sweet summer breeze, whispering trees, stars shining softly above. Uncle, for two years I have been looking for her everywhere. She's lost. I cannot find a trace of her. But then go with other girls, Etienne. There are no other girls. I insist you come to my masquerade ball tonight and dance with every young lady present. I will not be there, Uncle. Oh, how mixed up everything is in this world. You can be somewhere at the right time and find the wrong girl. Or perhaps you've missed the right girl by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I wonder if Cupid is silly or stupid or if the little rascal cannot see For loving and wooing are all of his doing And yet he makes it painful as can be He mixes the stations, he changes relations For all your little schemes he sets a snare And though you have planned it, both understand it He'll fix it so your sweetheart is not there To be there without any fear But there's always a hitch in it somewhere And the thought sets your brain in a whirl For seldom, if ever, you'll find them together The time and the place
tonight, you must be present at my masquerade, Etienne. It is for charity, and we are going to auction off many items. I will need your help. Then I will come, Uncle. But my hearts will not be there. A delightful ball and bazaar, my dear Count. <laughs> we are honored to have a guest from America, Monsieur Brent. Oh, thank you. Say, the young lady in the fortune teller's costume, uh -huh. she looks sort of familiar. Well, I happen to know that is our guest of honor, the opera star Mademoiselle Bellini. Huh? But she has not yet removed her mask. I think I've met her before. Maybe the last time I was here in Paris. I am anxious for my nephew to meet her, for she is a great lady. Uh, perhaps she will help him forget a little shop girl he once knew. A little shop girl? Yeah. Excuse me, Count. Would you uh, tell my fortune, mademoiselle? Yes, I will. For it was you who gave me my good fortune, Mr. Brent. Fifi, mademoiselle modiste. Oh, I have been waiting to see you, my dear friend. For here in this envelope is the money you lent to me, which started me on my way. Capitaine Etienne de Beauvray. He is here. I have not seen him for two years, Mr. Brent. Ah, my boy. Come. I wish to present you to our guest of honor, Mademoiselle Bellini. Yes, Your Excellency. My nephew and heir, Captain Etienne de Bouvray. Enchanted. Delighted, Mademoiselle. She's uh, quite a fortune teller, my boy. I'll bet she can tell you a lot about your future. Would you honor me, Mademoiselle? <laughs> Come, Monsieur Prince. Fortune telling is a private matter. Your hand, Captain. There. Ah. Your past is most interesting. I see a redhead and two brunettes. I've loved only one woman, but she has forgotten me. Then I shall read your future. Ah, uh, I see a great surprise. You are going to meet someone that you have not seen for two years. Yes? Someone who loves you very much. Go on, mademoiselle, go on. Oh, dear. I see in your palm that there is someone who hates her. My uncle. But no matter what he says, if I find my Fifi again, I shall marry her the moment she will have me. Madame et Monsieur, our guest of honor has been declared official mascot of our troops. And so we request that she sing for us, Mademoiselle Bellini. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am honored to be appointed your mascot. Though so my heart belongs to only one of you. Hark the drum, here they come on parade. At their side hangs their toy trusty blade. And they all look so fine as they swing into line. Is no one there? They would die as a tribe do. Ever one who dishonor would do. I'm the tooth of the mess. I'm the girl of it. I'm the mother of the truth. On the drum, here we come on parade. Uh, Uncle, your party has turned into a surprise party. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this ball is for the benefit of charity. I would like to auction off a hat. It is a creation of Madame Cécile. And to the highest bidder goes this hat, as well as a kiss from me. I bid a thousand francs. Uh, two thousand. Why, Count, for this little hat? Hello, hat. 
How's everybody at home? Three thousand. Uh, five thousand. Sold to the Comte de Samar. Here's your hat, Monsieur le Comte. Ah, oh, thank you, mademoiselle. How about the kiss, uncle? Ah, <laughs> uh, that I bequeath to my nephew. Oh, uh, mademoiselle, you said you would marry my nephew on the day I apologized to you. Well, I do that now, and humbly. How can I not accept your kindness, my dear Count? Since you come to me with your hat in your hands. Now, my sweet, the keys. There. Oh, it's on the forehead. <laughs> we shall start the bidding again. And I shall call you down a little. <laughs> Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Verna Felton, Joseph Kearns, Will Wright, and our entire company for their fine performances tonight. The book and lyrics were by Henry Blossom with music by Victor Herbert. This broadcast of Mademoiselle Modiste was dramatized for The Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. A better way of life on America's farms is the continuing goal of more than two million members of 4-H clubs, whose representatives are holding their annual meeting this week in Chicago. And in reaching this goal, these young people have the active aid of railroads. For railroads not only supply transportation for the farmer's products and bring him most of the things he needs to live and produce better, but they also furnish aid in improving agricultural methods. In doing this, through such groups of young people as the 4-H clubs, the railroads offer the encouragement that helps these club members of today become the farm leaders of tomorrow. And now here again is lovely Dorothy Kirsten. Thank you, Jordan. Who are you romancing next week? Well, Gladys Schwarthout is our show train guest, Dorothy, for the first time. And we'll be singing the wonderful Viennese music of Marinka. Texas and I'll be listening, partner. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Good night, Dorothy, and come back soon. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night at Marinka, this is Gordon McRae saying Good night. <laughs> Mademoiselle Modiste was transcribed in Hollywood and presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlit. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for The American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> It's the ever-popular Telephone Hour tonight on NBC.